Tube was missing us. Here we go. Tube was missing us. Here we go. Okay. Tube, we can't forget you. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. Uh, Big, big one today. So this is episode two. Episode two of the Wealth Principles. This is a limited four-part series that we are doing with the good brother, John Henry. And each week will be something different. Um, So we talked about marketing last week. Um, Solid episode. Yeah, for sure. Shout out to Ani. Um, So this this time around, we're going to talk about something that's near and dear to a lot of people's hearts and People have been trying to figure this out for years and a lot of people still struggle with this um, content. Mm -hmm. Content creation uh, changed my life, Mm. changed all of our lives at Earn Your Leisure, anybody associated with Earn Your Leisure. Content creation changed our lives. The reason why I say that is because all of this really stems back to Instagram. That was the the genesis. That was the genesis of of where we are now, Um, creating content, for free, putting it out on Instagram for free and uh, people gravitating towards it, people championing it. And um, yeah, a couple years later, we are where we are now, but we still, the the, the general crux of yeah. everything still revolves around content, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Twitter, whatever, but. Yeah. All these different types of content types. So we had the root, obviously Instagram, but it's grown. Obviously, the podcast is a, is a form of content, and like you said, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Um, there's there's so many different types, and we, we try to explore them all, and not master them all, but at least dab dab a little bit in some of them. Yeah. So yeah. today we're gonna talk about content. So John, John, I'll let you um, I'll let you take it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> what up, YouTube? YouTube, Instagram, all you guys, I appreciate you all. Um, yeah, man, we're going to get into it. I mean, content is special, man. Um, it changed your guys' lives, changed my life as well, bro, meaningfully. And I remember, uh, I don't know, did you guys ever feel funny getting into this shit? Like, r- like right <laughs> at the start? Nah, right? you, know, you know what I always say? I didn't really feel funny, but I felt um, it took me years to, to start putting out content. And I wish I would have started sooner. And there was really no reason why I didn't, why it took me so long. It was just, you know, self-doubt, just, you know, not thinking something was really going to work out and, you know, who's really going to be successful online. Like, you know, just a regular mm-hmm. person, just a regular person. I have 500 followers. So I I didn't think that we would have, you know, where we are now. I'm thinking, you know, who's going right. to care about, who's going who's gonna to care about what somebody that has 500 followers has to say, how, how that, you know, they're going to look at me like I'm a, I'm not an expert. Who am I? Yeah. I mean, right. we, we consume content at a very high level and even when before we were making it. And um, I think from the other end of the spectrum, it was like, you know what? Content creation is great. Am I great at it? Hmm. Probably. I'm not the greatest, um, but let me find another aspect of how to amplify significance by finding content. Mm. And so that's a that's a whole nother avenue. Um, and that's why it kind of works for our, our dynamic for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, I can remember getting wait, I'm going live on Instagram, live uh on EYL, YouTube. I can remember, man, getting into uh I can remember getting into creating content and feeling I felt a little, uh, I would say a little hesitant to be that guy um, because at the time, I mean, it still feels, it felt more so like this earlier, but it felt real self-promotery. Mm. And I felt like there's a lot of people that their perception of what people will think about them stops them from producing content. But uh, they know though that it's the way to cross over to really grow your brand, grow your business. I felt that same way. I knew at the end of the day, I was going to have two, two realities that I was going to look at. One was, yo, I'm going to do this shit anyway and take whatever comes with it. Um, and the other would be, you know, die a slow death in obscurity. 
(laughs) (laughs) And for anyone, for anyone listening, obscurity is your greatest enemy when you're, when, when you're running your business, when you're growing your brand Um, and people spend a lot of money combating obscurity. There's a lot of people right now listening that would love to buy your shit, believe it or not. And I know that that can feel hard to believe sometimes when you're just getting off the ground, but people want to buy your shit. They just don't know about it. <laughs> so then <laughs> I, and I remember before I got into content, I tried everything, man. I tried direct mailers. You know, I went to the postal office and sent flyers out. I was, you know, uh, going to the, you know, community council meetings and pitching people and hustling and, um, I think all of those things work to a degree, but I've never found anything that worked quite like content. It's scalable. I mean, we touched on this last time on the Power of Brain episode, but uh, I mean, I was in Bermuda and someone knew about you guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, it's insane, man. I mean, you guys are probably on several continents at this point. Um, yeah, every continent except for Antarctica. <laughs> it might be an EYL. Might, yeah, might maybe be they did, they just don't they don't they don't know how to uh, cast in uh, the the listens over there. But yeah. I'm sure we are. <laughs> nah, we got we got love from every angle, every side of the world. So that's why this conversation is so important as far as content. It really can change your life. It definitely changed all of our lives, and um, it's continuing to change our lives. And it's just it's just the it's just information that we put out, the way we deliver it. It's not nothing that we pay. We don't we didn't pay anybody to do our content. Did our mm-hmm. own content learn I, I didn't go to school to make content i didn't go to school to learn how to market mm. just learn on the fly um and we are where we are now so if i can do it then anybody can do it um so yeah i'm excited to have this conversation and uh let, let's get into it let's get into it man i got a so from based on last week i had a number of you guys reach out and just eat up the slides and the information um i think people are going to be rocking with these for a long time um, so I'm going to go through, we, we, as always, have some heat prepared for you all. These are frameworks and visuals that I personally have just been executing against and living through and just bringing depth to these. It's one thing to just see the image and say, all right, cool. But legit, everything that I'm about to share, these are things that we put into practice every day. And I've been doing it since maybe since 2014 or so. So with that, um, let me kick off a little screen share and walk you guys through it. So uh, it's modern content strategy. Now, some of the key takeaways. Yo, listen to this. All right. No one ever fell in love with an artist off a single. It just has never happened. If you think about your favorite artists, you might have gotten a single that got you into the music, but you curated the love off the album. And I guarantee you, you wouldn't have found the artist in the first place if it wasn't for the single. <laughs> so in a lot of ways, I feel like music, um, which we talked, we touched on last episode, music is a great uh, blueprint for a brand, but it's also a great blueprint for content. They've been had this model figured out they'll lead with singles and then they'll get their core fan base to stick around for the album. And the album's not, the album cuts is not going to be for everybody. I know a lot of you guys, you know, you've heard, I made you look, but you haven't heard the cross. You haven't heard a lot of the album cuts. It's just for the Nas heads. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so, John. <laughs> I know Shadi's a big uh, Nas fan, but yeah, I think I could go bar. I, could, I think I could go bar for bar with, with anyone on any album. Um, so, so it's content, content, content. And then content gives people a chance to develop an opinion about you, man. Like to me, I liken it to imagine if Jesus Christ didn't share his gospel. Ooh. Right. Like religious or not. Right. Jesus Christ was a dude. Right. I mean, to put uh, put some respect on his name. Right. Special for some regular for others. But what was a was a to me a spectacular, a fascinating character in history. This man before social media, before anything. He got the gospel out. He was knocking on doors, shaking hands at the community centers. Like that boy had a message and he needed to get it out. And a lot of you guys are working on your brands and working on your business. 
and you're afraid to get the gospel out. Now, some of you guys want to get the gospel out and need the tools, and we have some of that too. But for those of you guys that are on the ledge and have not begun producing content for whatever reason, it's the same thing as if, you know, Jesus would have had the gospel just, just tucked tight. We wouldn't have shared shit, you know? Uh, it just was, it falls on deaf ears. And then just to bring that to a modern context, man, if you're not sharing your brand and your business's message, you will die a slow death. Um, and, and it's just a, a tremendous, tremendous tax to pay the tax of obscurity. Um, so it gives people a chance to develop an opinion about you. Um, it's like going, it's like going to a party and pretty much not saying shit. If you go to a party, and you don't say anything. People will maybe interpret things about you based on who you like, how you dress and how you roll and how you look. But I don't know about you all, but I'd rather remove all doubt and go straight up to someone and say, hey, what's going on? Listen, my name is John Henry. Here's what I'm doing. Blah, 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 blah. Then like you, hate you. That's not up to you. But your job is to make sure that everyone at least was aware of what it was that you was doing. Then it's open to interpretation. But a lot of people... Uh, in the startup lane, hit me up and say, yo, I'm trying to hit these fucking PR agencies. Like, bro, PR agencies. <laughs> <laughs> People are paying five, 10 K a month on retainer, getting one over on a startup founders, tapping into a little budget that they have. And then they say, yo, it takes six months to work before, you know, you spend 30 G's. They walk away with a bag. You walk away with a fucking article on ink that, that people pay for, by the way. Mm -hmm. And, and they told your story in their way, you want to tell your story in your way. So now if we're going to dive into some content strategy frameworks. It's the three H's, fellas. It's hero hub and hygiene. Hero is emotionally resonant shit that makes you look like a fucking hero, pretty much. Like I got this video. It's this four, page, it's this four minute video on, on my homepage. And that shit is a tearjerker. You watch that shit for the first time, you will shed a single tear at least. Right? It talks about my journeys, my struggles, my this and my that. That's that hero piece of content. And that was what in the 1950s, that adver the advertisement model uh, rested very heavily on your story beginning and ending in a single piece of content. Those, so that's the hero video. There's room for that. However, the biggest shift that has happened in modern media without a shadow of a doubt is that now you don't have to start and finish your story in any single piece. You tell your story in micro moments over a prolonged period of time. And so those short form pieces is what we call hygiene, short snackable little bits. I see you guys been getting into the TikTok game, right? You but noticed. The, <laughs> I noticed. But the granddaddy of all content production, right? For, for, for my practitioners out there that are listening and that they say, yo, you know, it's just I'm running my business is a little too hard to produce content at the same time then you must focus on hub key to make all content uh, at scale, which is a continuous episodic form from which you can pull hygienes and clips for hero. And it's a lot like what you guys have done. Your, your main flagship show, earn your leisure episode one, whatever it is now, 49, 51, 52, 57, 68, eventually 239, eventually 665. Run it up. Run it up. And from there, you pull all the micros out. But this is the way that I would organize it. And this is the way that we do organize it. And this I actually learned from my good bro, Andy Cranack, who's going to be joining us in, in uh, about five, seven minutes. Um, Andy Cranack taught me this shit. Andy Cranack in 2014, when I was running my incubator and I hit up him and D-Rock and all of Team GV's, uh, uh, like all his right hand men, I was like, yo, can you guys pull up to my incubator in Harlem and just like run a content strategy session? They pulled up and they taught me this framework and I have been using it from that day to current. It has changed my life completely. Shout out to the good brother, Gary V. Um, but this is the way I think about it. All right. So hero hub and hygiene is the format, but I think what team GV, what they did that made them very successful was that they reorganized it. And they put hub at the top hub and then macro content comes from there. And then short form comes from the bottom. So what do I mean? If you focus all of your energy, 
on producing hub content, i.e. earn your leisure episode one, market Mondays, it's one, two, three, four. If you over index on one time a week, right? Rather than having to think of something from scratch every time, you over index on one time a week, going all in on your hub. And then from there, you're able to repurpose that hub into long form, into written content, and into a ton of snackable content that you can then disseminate across various social channels. Yeah, this is, I want to say something real quick, because that's actually something, that's what, that's what I actually did. Uh, so if anybody doesn't know the story by now, uh, I'll tell it very briefly. Uh, Earn Your Leisure started two years ago, but two years before Earn Your Leisure started, I started my own personal campaign to, to grow my Instagram following. I went from 500 followers to 30,000 by the time we started Earn Your Leisure, I had 30,000 followers. So mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why Earn Your Leisure got off to such a good start is because we didn't just start at zero. We started with me having 30,000 and it was a snow effect but how I got to 30,000 was um, I was going on anybody's show because you know I, I was never good at like just putting a camera in front of my face and talking I just felt very uncomfortable and felt it wasn't natural so I would go on anybody that would have me on their show public access shows lo local radio shows internet radio shows it didn't really it didn't really matter the audience I didn't really care if there was one or or a million people listening, definitely wasn't a million people listening, but I was just going on those shows. I would have my cell phone and I would put the cell phone like on a prompt and I would just tape myself like for 60 minutes or 50 minutes, however, and then I would go back and chop up clips from those, from those um, interviews or those conversations. And then I would put those clips on Instagram. And it's crazy because I still repurpose those clips today on mm -hmm. TikTok and every now and then I'll repurpose that. So I, I've, I've got so much traction out of those. It probably was like, let's say 20 interviews. But out of those 20 interviews, you got thousands and thousands of miles of, of traction on social media. And that was really um, the blueprint that actually built the house of Earn Your Leisure. So it's interesting that you say that because that was the exact strategy that I used mm. before. Because the people might say, well, I don't have a platform to get on to. I don't have a podcast. Da, 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 da. Like I said, it's not really about the platform. It's just that for me, it was just about being comfortable speaking. And I felt more comfortable speaking in a conversation. And I just went on, like I said, anybody that would have me, I would just go on that. If nobody would have had me, I would have just told Troy, just talk to me. And I would have <laughs> just put my phone, just act like I was in, a, in, a, in an interview. Nobody would know the difference anyway. Okay, Rashad, I will. <laughs> I love that. Yo, and it, and it ties back to, in my view, um, your guys' tagline, assets over liabilities. You know, people view real estate as assets and all these tangible things. But in my view, man, content, are digital assets you got like I, I was just on your page and and i seen that the wall street trapper video is up to almost a, a million views yeah that's a yeah. fucking asset that is a moment in time that you know magic was made and it has long tail compound benefits and you never know which piece it is that's going to pop the other day my executive producer a lot of people watching know that i i used to host a tv show on vice yo I didn't know this, but my show is only now just debuting in New Zealand. This show came out two years ago. Okay. Wow. And when and when they launch, they do the same bells and whistles, billboards, this and that. And they drop it, you know, programmatically like week after week. And we are the top show and we're the second top, uh, second top show in New Zealand right now. Whole new country. I'm getting spikes of followers from Kiwis out there. And, um, it just goes to show you it's a lot like investing and compound interest. Mm -hmm. Some compound views work much the same way. If you create content over time, those same pieces of content mature. Google algorithm picks them up, ranks them, directs traffic your way, and you only develop more and more efficiencies. Now, for those curious about who it is that we have on our team, at Team JH, we're up to a team of 12 at uh at team gv they're up to a team of 35 or some crazy shit i'll let andy speak to it but effectively video so and by the way people can go and produce off a of fucking iphone like rashad was saying but videographer it could also be you um an annotator someone to timestamp all the videos and I, I have a flow chart to describe how this works the key is an editor once you once you build up an archive of footage you're going to be bottlenecked if you're if you leave it to yourself to go through all the footage, edit it, caption it, caption it, headline it. So the key hire for us, the first one that I made was was actually was uh, was an editor. And then we have designers and illustrators. And here's the way it works. You shoot your hub. 
you upload that shit to a drive, you watch it and you timestamp. This is how we do it. This is our exact process that we do over and over and over. We'll shoot a hub. We'll upload that shit. We'll say, yo, it's uploaded. Someone will watch. It used to be me. I used to do every single one of these steps. Now I have a team. Someone will watch it and timestamp it and say, okay, yo, bet. At this moment, from 2.34 to 3.38, Troy said some fire shit about X timestamped. And then we just go through and we timestamp the entire video, right? Now I'm giving, by the way, it took me six years to get to this point in my knowledge. So for any, I, I hope that someone will take this and really make this their own. Yeah, this is golden. Out. This is want. golden, John. This is golden. So now, now once you, that shit is annotated, upload it, the long, the full long form. Don't edit that shit down. Upload the full long form up to YouTube or whatever you want to use to house the, the long form and let that live as the macro asset. Then from there, your editor can pull out clips. It, again, it used to be me. It probably also is slash used to be you guys. You no, pull it's out still, like- It's still, everything you're saying is our process. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll let you finish. I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, this I'll, is gold. I'm gonna let you finish now. Nah. Um, <laughs> so, so you pull out the micros, right? And when you pull out a micro clip, like, yo, this, this was a fire moment, this was a fire moment, this fire moment. Then you do this next step. You guys happen to have a gift at this next step. And I have developed a secret thesis that I believe a big part of your guys' success has been your guys' ability to actually craft headlines. Major, major, key, major key. Yo, we Bro, major, yo, hey, John, this is crazy. Sleep on the fucking headlines. <laughs> major key, major key. Can we can we go through this process to how we do it? Yeah, I'm, I'll let him. I want to let him. Oh yeah, yeah, finish. And then ultimately, all right. Then ultimately, you distribute the pieces, and then the last the last piece is to me almost just as important. You listen. You listen to the audience, what they found was gems, what they thought was trash, and then you just kind of reiterate. Um, so yeah, get into it, fellas. Was um, wait, yeah, lead the lead the chart up, leave the chart up, and then all right, bet, 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 bet. yeah. So I mean, this is crazy because when when you say a team and people always ask like, how do we do it? How do we do it? You want to just break? We can go through this yeah, whole. Yeah, I go through this, this whole process. process. I know we gotta bring our guest on, yeah. but um, so when we do a podcast, I right, we do the podcast, and we have um obviously the audio and the visual. So. The audio gets uploaded. Um, Mike in Atlanta, that's our third partner. He he uh, he does all the technical behind the scenes stuff. So he he'll he'll upload the audio. And right. we first we gotta shoot it. So we, oh, I'll yeah. just go. I'll go from the start. So we shoot it right. So that that's a process too. And again, okay. that that's all us, right? We 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 set up the shots. Obviously, mm -hmm. everybody knows that we're doing it from from the same location. Then we gotta upload it. That process takes a while because we're shooting from three different cameras. The mm -hmm. size of these files are really large, and so we have to upload it. That takes about three hours. Mm -hmm. Then from that point, now Shadi has to hit get the audio, and Mike gets the visual. And then yeah, yeah. So they send me the audio. They send me the audio, and then um, I listen to the audio and I edit it. I tell them like, I right, take this out. You know, oh, really you do. do okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. We really don't do too much editing, but I'm really listening to it to get um, Instagram clips. So I write down, like, as I'm listening to it, I know like, I right, this is this is something that's going to be a dope clip. So I got just a yellow pad and I'll write down like 1501. He talks about how he leveraged a million dollars from the bank to go buy a mansion, something like that. I write, I write down, so I write down like 10 different like points of like good clips, even reels, stuff like that. And then after I tell them, all right, um, these are the edit points. I don't tell them the clip points. I just tell them the edit points then. They do what they do as far as chop it up. Mm -hmm. Troy puts it on the audio. Mike handles the, the video. It goes on YouTube. And then from YouTube, I watch it um, before it comes out. And I'll tell our editor, Rich, who's Mike's brother, I'll tell him, like, this is the clip that I want. 1501 to 1601, whatever. Like, you know what I mean? I tell him, like, sometimes I got to, like, cut some parts out, like, cut 30 seconds out here. Just give me this clip. He sends it to me. And then um, the, the, the headline is extremely important. There's no, like I said, I didn't go to school for that, but I still, I do all the headlines. So it's just something that I always think of like, what would make me want to watch a video? So mm -hmm. it's like, all right, um, how to make a thousand dollars in 10 days with a cookie cutter prep. Like you know what I'm saying <laughs> something that's just like, so outrageous that damn, like this is interesting. And then right. I actually send it to Bam, who's Mike's other brother. I send it to him just to like clean up the, the, the English on it, or like if he needs to add a word or something. And then I use an app called Vaunt. Um, and I go in Vaunt, Vaunt's like $5. And I, I just put the app, I put the, the text in. And then there's another app called Resizer, which resizes it for IGTV, because IGTV travels more than just regular 60 second videos. 
It does. That's our process. Hey, listen. That's a a, a billion dollars worth of game. I've, it is. I, to to watch this process is is amazing. Like you, sometimes he'll just listen to this thing out loud. I'm like, yo, can you put your headphones on, man? <laughs> <laughs> but he's always got his yellow pad. If you ever seen a if you ever seen an episode, you seen a yellow pad. That's what he's doing. With it. It, it's pretty impressive to watch. Shot but it, down, no, it's that, that's it. That's the game right there. And that's like a, a five man team of people that's just putting this content out. There it is, people. I mean, straight from a media company, and I, I, and I myself pretty much a media machine. Now, this right here is something that I'm passionate about um, as well. A lot of people think that when you create content that you talk about what you do. Now, this, this shit is counterintuitive right here. But no one gives a fuck about what you do or what you sell. X. They care about what they do with what you sell. <laughs> mm. Right? So there's a big difference there. Right? People don't care about insurance, for example, in Loop's case. They care about using insurance to go do the things that they got to do, need to do, want to do, love to do. People don't care about even really financial literacy content for the sake of financial literacy. They care about it so that they can go make their moves. Right. Exactly. If you sell boots, people don't care about the boots. They care about hiking. Right. And so there, this is the common, this is the rookie mistake. We all make it. I've made it myself. Um, but when you launch your efforts, you have a tendency to over index on, and it's, it's very, you put yourself at the center, like, yo, this is my brand. You should care about what I'm doing and what I'm selling. But in reality, there's always a sweet spot between what your audience cares about and what you sell. And if you can create content in the middle there, your people are going to discover your brand because of your content, Right. Take a look at what we're doing here, by the way, case in point. We're not talking about insurance at all, right? We are creating content that I've learned my, my audience finds valuable, producing content, and I'm hoping that if I provide a little bit of value, speaking about things that are unrelated to my product, but is at the intersection of what my product is and what my audience cares about, they will then say it's a gateway drug to then say, oh, shit, this is pretty dope. So this is a, yo, this, there's a lot of depth in this slide, folks. I would, I would lock in on that shit and study it. And then lastly, um, how do you pick your hubs? If the hubs are the most important thing, we start with the brand's vision, the mission, the purpose. I talked, we talked about this in the last slide. If you don't have the last slide, uh, the last uh, uh, PDF from episode one, loopinsure.co slash EYL, loopinsure.co slash EYL, link it up, joints, uh, gents. Um, so from, from your purpose, you, you guys can create these values. And then the, the, what we do is we, we develop a hub for every value. Um, and there's a lot of depth in that as well. But I want to hear from my boy, Andy Cranach. You guys got the goods. You guys got the fucking master sheet. If I would have started with this shit on day one, man, I don't even know where I would be. But I'll tell you what, I am super thankful that my boy, AK, Andy Cranach, it's in the building. Hey. What's, <laughs> hey, what's, what's going on, man? What's going on? How you doing? You guys are really talking game, man. This is cool. It's cool to see. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. Thank you. Thank you, bro. We're getting into it now. Um, just for some context setting, I touched on this earlier, but AK, uh, Alice D. Simone, and D-Rock came up to, to Harlem with me. We kicked it on a content strategy session. And at that point, I knew you were ahead of the curve. Your, your thinking was real fresh. I remember you was just dropping shit like, yo, we're on fucking Pinterest. Uh, you was just like <laughs> uh, on platforms and channels and spaces that I thought were really unique. And over the years, as time has gone by, for folks that don't follow Andy Cranach, make sure you tap in at Cranach on Instagram. Um, I mean, you guys have continued leading the way. You guys have continued uh, uh, just charting white space and platforms ahead of anyone else. And for, for those that don't know, by the way, by the way, quick shout out to AK, Andy Cranach actually, as far as we know, created that little fucking progress bar. Do you guys remember when videos used to have uh, a little bar that would go? That was an idea that came from AK and then they deployed it on Gary Vee's page and now it, it became a thing. It's less popular these days, um, but uh, a big welcome. Yo, to I didn't even really see. That's I, I appreciate all the love, John. That's facts. I, I love the progress bar. I try to give myself credit for the progress bar. But honestly, like we started putting video on Facebook, like we put one video on Facebook and the reach was crazy right when Facebook video came out. 
And then you read the fact like, oh, wait, like 95% of users on Facebook consume video without sound. So I'm like, yo, D-Rock, I think we should probably caption our videos. Like people are just going to watch our videos, but they're not actually listening. Gary's all he's doing is talking. Why don't we put captions on it? And then we did A-B test on paid media. What happens if you show a paid ad uh, with captions versus with no captions? And the results are staggering. It's like, okay, we're captioning every video now. And this is 2013, 14. <laughs> And it's crazy now to see it's like you, everyone, like it's the video editor's nightmare, but you got to catch in your videos if you're, if you're publishing online. Wow. Mm. That's dope. Yo, so, so how, how has, in your view, like content strategy and all this shit, how has that it, it evolved from like when you and I first were chopping 2013, 2014, all the way up to like 2021? Like give us the, the, your download yeah, on like what have been the big shifts. It's, it's, it's funny. Like, I think uh, the, the things that you'll learn on any platform will apply itself to any other platform, right? There's like tried and true religion of how to think about creating emotional content for audiences and like buttons to press. And I think those things will always remain true. Um, but yeah, the platforms have really evolved, like live and vertical video. I've been thinking a lot about vertical video. I don't know if you guys are on YouTube shorts. But if you're not on YouTube Shorts, I would highly recommend it. YouTube is really prioritizing that. And it's a vertical video. Like uh, the, the increase and in shift from desktop to mobile on YouTube is really big over the last couple of years. And a lot of people are just consuming, consuming video content vertically. Um, so I think like vertical video, thinking about edit, editing for vertical video. And then just the evolution of content editing uh, and the, the need to just be able to shoot on your phone and edit on your phone and edit in some app on your phone versus like i gotta have the the high quality camera and i gotta have adobe creative suite i think every day that becomes less true and it just comes down to like the raw creativity of whoever that creator is yo what's the top shit that you learned um over your years executing uh, of course you you have like you have a great subject to work off of with gary v's just spitting heat all the fucking time yeah. um what have been kind of the things that you've observed that like these are the tried and true things that just like fucking work when it comes to content that people could maybe uh, apply to their own game? I'm trying to think of a couple. One, small hinges open up big doors, meaning like a time like that progress bar or those captions could literally drive the performance of a video if it didn't have it like you post a video with it and without it you'll see very different results mm. like uh instagram the instagram thumbnail on a video can drive very different results you know it's like really fine-tuning those small things uh in order to like drive results but it's it's challenging right because you don't want to overthink it like you, you got to keep putting it out keep putting it out keep putting it out and hopefully you get the learnings to know like oh shit i need to put this thing on the thumbnail because that's what's actually working Right. Um, but just like small, small variances in creative can really impact things like copy. <laughs> copy continues to be one of the most underrated things. Like if, if you've ever run Facebook ads, if you've ever tried to create creative for Facebook ads, I think the, the game is won and lost within the post captions. Like I've, I've seen crazy results on like conversion, like buying a T-shirt or a hoodie strictly predicated on what that sense is on the image. <laughs> so like <laughs> what, what, the image, rather. what what would what would be a good caption in that to make people convert to buy that hoodie as opposed to something that's not going to make them convert? Who the hell knows? Like there's, there's 10 different versions of it, right? Like I think it could be a uh, last, last one to purchase wins. I don't know. Like something that's going to draw, draw insight and intrigue. One of my favorite stories is uh, to, and to, to, to exemplify how big of a difference can be. It's like early, early, uh, right when Facebook ads came out, I was running ads for Gary's USC keynote. It's one of my favorite keynotes. He, he's giving a keynote to uh, MBA students and his opening line is like, well, let's just start with, I don't think you can teach entrepreneurship. So this is awkward. <laughs> and it's just like super raw, yeah, yeah. super raw and rugged. He's like, yo, let's, let's spend money on it. I want to promote it. I want to, I want to get in front of people. So I, I did that. Uh, when the results weren't great, we were targeting uh, college students interested in business. I had D-Rock and the video editing team like cut it up 13 different ways. They were sick of me saying like, no, start it with this or like cut this part out. The results were the same. And then eventually I'm like, all right, said, let's see what Gary thinks. I showed it to Gary and he asked me what the post copy is. And I showed him, he's like, all right, try this. And he changed it to wanna, like he broke in English, wanna win in business, dot, dot, dot. Watch the first 13 seconds of this and tried not watching the rest. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we, we went from spending $2 for someone to watch 15 seconds to f- five cents to watch all 20 minutes of the keynote. <laughs> wow. wow. Oh, just Andy. from like the, the Facebook top post caption. It's because like that's what they were leading with. They saw it and it hooked them. You know, and like the comments are like, I watched the first 13 seconds and I stopped. Fuck you. Like, but, <laughs> uh, it worked, yeah. you know, and that was like a big lesson to me. I'm like, oh shit, like there's little things that can really impact it. Andy, I'm wondering and when you were starting this, um, obviously when you said when Facebook video came, was there a content like schedule or dis- distribution schedule? Or you guys were just like, I'm gonna film, I'm gonna film and we'll put out as many videos as we can. Cause a lot of people get mixed up in that. Like wh- how many should I be putting out? How many videos, how many pieces of, of content should I be putting out? Yeah, it's a good, the, the, do your best, like to the latter point of like, instead of thinking about how much and what your schedule is, just like keep posting until you don't have any bullets left in the fifth type <laughs> is the mentality, you know? But I always like, as a manager of a team, I'm always trying to set expectations and keep shit organized. But like working for Gary, it's just like <laughs> we're just going as hard as we can, as fast as we can, trying to keep up. So like we have a we have a cadence of like, yo, we gotta hit this platform X amount of times. And it's always uh prioritized against like, yo, we gotta be on TikTok, we gotta be on IG. Like those are the two main pillars of the platforms that we gotta be rocking with. And then if we can get to Pinterest, if we can get to Snap, if we can get to YouTube, if we can get to Twitter, mm-hmm. but like it's it's deciding which one is the most important to you that you have to hit a certain cadence from and then try and try and shoot everywhere else you can ak on that on that note so 2021 obviously there's some new juggernauts that wouldn't even have been mentioned a couple years ago so what's your sense on the top platforms for organic reach right now um and then i also want to know you know this whole debate about instagram declining like i still think that there's a lot of mileage there because the paid infrastructure is so sophisticated so uh even though the organic is declining do you still think it's worth playing in on. on I think like, I think we still undervalue uh, how important Instagram is as a replacement for the website. Like I was talking to a VC firm earlier today and I'm like, yo, we need to get our Instagram better because we don't have that many followers. And like, it's just not going to play out. They don't go when I'm pitching the company or I'm doing anything. It doesn't matter who they are. Even if they're a 50 year old dude, they're opening their phone and going to Instagram. Mm. So like, Instagram reach is down, you know, but like, I think you really need to prioritize it just from like a hygiene perspective of like what happens when someone goes on Instagram and looks at your profile, that's going to be their first impression of your brand, regardless. Um, I think, honestly, like uh, TikTok is still probably number one for organic reach, but probably honestly, I would say YouTube shorts, like just over the last four weeks, five weeks, the things that I've seen on YouTube shorts is crazy. Like I've, I've heard of YouTube channels going from zero to 50 K subscribers in a week mm. off of like three videos. And like, this is like, I loved, honestly, I, I was really impressed with everything that you guys were laying out before in the slides and the three H's. I thought it was really good. Um, but like, you can rip, like do a stitch together some of your best TikToks and put it on YouTube shorts and it could hit, especially if you have the right thumbnail and title. So YouTube shorts, can you just explain what that is? Um, it's like TikTok. One minute. It's a it's a vertical video, uh, sixty seconds or less, and then YouTube is going to categorize that as a short. And it's a new and as does any other platform. When they release a new product or format, they push it. They want people to use it. They want people to see it. So they give it prioritization in the feed. Mm. So in in terms of content types, we're putting YouTube Shorts, uh, TikTok, and Instagram as far as organic reach in that order. Yeah, today. Today, as yeah, of, right. Good change. Uh, you know, as of April fifteenth, let's talk tomorrow. You know, <laughs> uh, yo, and 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 I'm gonna put a bid in there for LinkedIn as well. I've been so surprised, man. AK, you remember the early days, or all of us watching the early days of Facebook? I remember if you so much as liked someone's post, then everyone that you're fucking connected to was gonna see it just because you liked it. And I'm scrolling down the LinkedIn feed, seeing posts are being served to me only because someone that I'm connected to commented, liked, and those to me are the telltale signs of just like, just dished out organic distribution. So a shout out to LinkedIn there. Clubhouse I like as well as like a listening tool. Um, I was gonna say Clubhouse, like you don't necessarily think about Clubhouse as organic reach, but it it is there. And like, I honestly think like if you got game to spit and, and you can host an audience, Clubhouse is probably the best way to grow your Instagram following. 
Right. Because I love it because there's no text, right? So they see you spitting some shit and then they tap on your bio and then they flow through the 100%. Instagram. And anytime I'm in a clubhouse room, my, my following grows. Mm. Like, and if you, and I'm not even really talking, I'm just hanging out in the room, but people see that, like, people follow me, like, oh, who's this? Oh, da da da. Yo, so, so now let's take a step back um, and just like, you know, you're in the world of media, but it's also media at the intersection of business. Um, and you guys obviously have taken just a real big position on media, comma, whatever type of business you are. Um, yeah. And you guys have the uh, distinct, I think, effectively opportunity to have a lot of people at your disposal running a team. Um, so I want to get into a couple things there with respect to like, running team process. Like we think about all this shit all the time. I, I know a lot of people listening may, may not be in the position to run a team, but like, if you are growing a team, who are you bringing on first and how are you managing them? Like I would literally want, like, are you on fucking G drive? Are you using Airtable? Like what are the ways that you go, go about managing the team? Um, yeah. I mean, like there's, there's tons of tools you can have for, uh, we use it. Personally, we use Asana for like content ticketing, which is like a great way to just upload content, decide if it needs feedback, if it's ready uh, to post. Um, I mean, honestly, I just love Google products. I live my life in Google Sheets and Google Docs. <laughs> it's simple. It's easy. It's free. Google Drive. You can upload everything you want. Um, in terms of like team, I, I, I really think it's a, it's the two headed ninja of like someone like myself or someone who has strategy uh, and can give creative feedback. And then someone who can really execute the creative in a way that I can't, mm -hmm. if you can have those two people, you can basically accomplish any content need you, you need for any platform. When, when you're studying uh, the content that you created, what type of analytics are you, are you valuing the most? Is it the, the time watched? Is it um, impressions? I, is it, I, know, I try to per, per platform, like the macro one is how many unique people am I reaching, which for most platforms, I don't that offer that Facebook really does. And that's what they built their like entire marketing engine off of, which is like unique people reach. We talk to actually humans and you can target a 22 year old who lives in Chicago whose birthday is tomorrow, like Google or TikTok. They don't have any sort of that targeting, targeting capabilities, but like the macro is like, how many people are you really reaching? And then under that for each platform, what levers impact that number? So like mm -hmm. shares, of course, like if your shit's getting shared, that's going to be a huge multiplier for how many people you're reaching. Comments. I think of it, I call it high valued engagements, comments, shares, likes. Those are really going to be the things that drive your overall reach. But it starts with reach and then per platform. Uh, it depends on which platform it is that you can try to dive into deeper and just focus on like YouTube, for example, obsess over your click through rate. How many people are clicking on my video and what can I learn about what drives more click throughs or less? And then if you focus on that inherently, the reach is going to grow. So how, how often are you guys like um, effectively discussing this shit? Like, do, I mean, probably all day on text and Slack, but like, are you guys meeting formally like once a week to discuss all this shit? And when you do, do you guys have like someone that went ahead and like took the snapshots and was like, yo, this piece performed like this. Like, is it that technical or is it more just like, yo, I think this one did well. It, it, it is. I mean, like I've, it, this is eight years now that, that I've, that I've been operating this team. And like, I think the biggest shift for me was letting go of the reins. Like I felt like I always needed to be the guru and the guy who like, if I, anyone asks anything about any platform, anytime <laughs> I got the answers, you right. know? And then I, all of a sudden I realized that was coming not at, only at the cost of my time, but like at my team's growth and like opportunity. And like, I don't need to be that. And now like our team is staffed against, we have what we call a platform strategy producer for every platform. Like if someone asks me about YouTube, I'm not saying like, okay, I know. I'm like, yo, you gotta go talk to Jake. Jake's mm. got the answers. Mm. Um, so it's, it, it's really creating ownership of that. And yeah, then we have a weekly cadence of like talking with that individual, like, yo, what, what are you saying on the platform? And then I can ask the questions of like, okay, what about this? Have you thought about that? And then uh, they're the real experts and I'm just trying to understand and, get, and learn from them. And then when we're talking to clients or we're talking to G or whatever the case is, it's a combined effort of the individual expertise on that platform. And then collectively what we're all learning. Is, now, yeah, go ahead, Rashad. Is Gary V involved? What is his involvement in content creation? Obviously he's not creating the content. And, is he involved? Well, I mean, he's, 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 he's heavily involved. Like anything that he posts on his Instagram or Twitter is him. So we, we have a, a text thread, it's really WhatsApp, where we send him 
options of content that we've edited or images of content that we've created. He decides which ones he likes. He writes the copy for it. He posts it. Twitter, we don't ever really touch. Like sometimes he, we need to do like, hey, Gary, let's promote this podcast. We'll send him the link. He decides how, how he wants to promote it. I, I think I'm always surprised. <laughs> and I, I always push him to like go a little even more behind the scenes. But like he's really involved in deciding what gets pushed. Occasionally he'll be like, yo, I don't like that color red. Change it to blue. Stuff like that. Not that much. And I'm grateful for that. Like because we generally it, it's all systems go. Everything's approved. I suffocate when I'm working with clients. and They're like, can you change the color of that? I'm like, oh, it looks good. Let's go on to the next. But he's, he's involved, you know, and uh, the real, I think the real riffing off of what you guys were talking about before I joined, the real question for anyone is what is actually going to put you in a position to create the most content? Mm. You know, like everyone idolizes and puts like, oh, I'm going to start a podcast or I'm going to do this. But like, no bullshit. Like, what are you at? What's actually going to get you to a place where you can post four times a day? <laughs> Whatever that is, that's the real answer of what you need to be doing. And for Gary, it just so happens like, all right, I'm just going to have someone who follows me around and records what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> and then we post produce it, you know? Uh, mm. Yo, so if you were starting a business or, or for the people in your guys' ecosystem that come in because they're aspiring entrepreneurs or new founders or, and you guys are constantly dishing out vice thoughts or just weighing this idea of like, media as it relates to business i mean if you were starting a new brand today like what would you do to blow that shit up um yeah i'd put a, an ungodly amount of content online on the platforms that matter and i would try to learn i would not pigeonhole myself into this is the right brand messaging and this is what our brand guidelines are and this is what we should doing i would try to come up with a baseline test of this could be our brand guideline. This could be a brand guideline. This could be our, our main focal point. Try and get signals back on what actually is and then double down on it. Mm. Um, yeah. And try to prioritize and, and ask myself just as I would for a personal brand, like in what scenario, whether I'm insurance company or home Depot, what stories could I tell every day that would bring value, whether that's uh, it's because it's funny or it's because it's interesting. Cause now I know how to build a door. Mm. like what do you what can you really do at a high volume of content to become a media company you know mm. i love the example of a uh, michelin star or yeah michelin their tire company and in order to get uh people to drive more they created a restaurant review book which mm. because they want to encourage, encourage people to get outside of the city they're like okay let's go do let's go review this this restaurant in pennsylvania so mm. people will get out of new york city it ended up becoming like Michelin star rating, which we all know, but it's like an interesting exercise of like, how can you extrapolate what you're about and start storytelling in a different format? Yo, how should people approach yeah, By the way, we are getting straight fucking heat from Andy Cranach right now. And it's like, <laughs> yo, I wish people don't even really understand what the fuck's going on. We have earn your leisure, the number one fucking business platform in the world right now. Andy Cranag, who's heading up the most successful, in my opinion, most successful modern content strategy in history, uh, and myself, a young gun, somewhere in the middle. <laughs> uh, yo, straight heat, like you can't replicate this shit. Um, yo, I, I'll give you, I'll give you kudos too, John, because like I think a lot of people in our ecosystem that we're cool with that like come come by the office and know Gary or show love. Gary, Gary tells them exactly what to do or, or exactly what he would do. 97 percent don't do anything and like <laughs> eventually i get tired because like as i've grown i'm like oh i'm excited i'm excited to watch them do their shit you've done everything man to it like you really executed in a big way and i think that in itself is like like, like why you are where you are today but it, it it's, you, it's a big muscle thank you bro i appreciate that um you know i was i was ch i was chopping with gary the other day uh one-on-one -on -one, he was like yo john he, he looked at me he was like yo i'm the best marketer in the world <laughs> like it was just a fucking claim and it was just because <laughs> i wear a hug. i was like yo that's some real shit you know he's the Le fucking lebron of marketing at this point <clears throat> yo switching gears into paid right a lot of businesses listening now a lot of businesses in the eyl ecosystem a lot of brands um they're trying to decipher uh when paid is appropriate um, so how do you look at paid? Do you look at paid as the amplification of organic, i.e. you post, it does well, you put money behind it, you disseminate or, and, or 
do you think there's a bigger opportunity in uh, segmenting cold audiences, running them uh, effectively like hooks, bringing them to your website, cooking them and then retargeting and having a retargeting sequence? Um, or is it the wrong way to be looking at one or the other? Um, so I guess in the which answer's way, always, like, the answer is always both, right? Like I, I think like in general organic land, like running media against your top performing posts is a really good idea <laughs> like that's inherently going to probably be the best content for your page strategy uh conversely like you're not going it'll be really difficult to convert people that don't know your brand mm. you know like i think it's like 95 percent of people that go to a website for the first time will never purchase so like if you like you need to have a real retargeting strategy outside of just like hey i know you went to our website buy this there could be like hey you went to our website learn more about us Right. Here's like a really cool story video. And then you retarget people that watch that video. So like right. sequential messaging of when they first come in contact with you. And then also just conversely, like hitting up the people. It's, I think the analogy is like uh, hunting versus farming. Have a strategy for both. Hunting would be going prospecting, getting new people who don't know you and thinking about contextual ways to speak to them. Mm -hmm. All right, here are the five, like the five different buckets that people we want to hunt, psychographics, demographics, and make content specific to them. And then farming is making sure that everyone that already fucks with you continues to fuck with you. Right. Putting water on the seeds, like everything you got to do to keep that, but keep that base seeing your content. So like even boosting against your current fans, I think is totally fine. Like mm -hmm. people have some like, feel some type of way of like, oh, I don't want my audience to see a sponsored post for me. It's like, why? It's okay. Like it's ads, like it's fine. They're not going to like unfollow you. And if you do, you can get a new one. <laughs> right, right, right. Yo, this is straight heat. I do want to make time for the community to ask some questions, get a chance to j riff with AK direct. Um, Troy, let some people in the building. Yeah, yeah. So earners, if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand. I, I had a quick, quick question because you, you did the timestamp, right? And you said that the, the captions on the videos was one thing, but then you had that unique sound. And so mm -hmm. I want to, mm -hmm. is there something that you see in the horizon that is going to be the new thing that, that people can use to create content or some type of fun thing that's going to be coming down the line? In terms of like formats of content or just a way, like to be able to produce content? Or, yeah. Format is, is something that piques my, my interest. Well, like, right? well, this, that, it's funny. We were, we were talking about what you just referenced was the sonic branding. And that was 100% Gary. Like he spent a lot of time trying to put people on podcasting and like, your know, voice is really going to matter. Like right now I can say, hey, Siri, order me soap. And Siri will probably figure out how to order soap or it's going to be there in a couple months. And then he started thinking about, uh, wait a minute, if everyone's really, really going to get into the audio voice landscape, how are we thinking about branding that? Like, it's really easy to brand something visually with a watermark, a logo. How are you going to brand, uh, you know, from an audio perspective? And then the, <laughs> one late night, D-Rock hooked up uh, an audio tag. That sound up is actually <laughs> Gary doing that. And then we just started putting it on all of his videos. We now use a different ones like Gary V showed me. Uh, <laughs> but like, it's cool to think about, you know, if, if like mm -hmm. where you're at the Super Bowl or you're at a, the Yankees game and all of a sudden you hear that sound and you associate it with an individual or brand is really, really powerful. Mm. And you may not even need to pay like the impression that you would have to pay to do that. Well, might be way less than if you had to show them a TV spot wow. and you're still going to get that same brand recognition and impact. Wow. Yo, it, it actually makes branding. me think of that. Like hip hop has been doing this shit, right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Right, every, right. every DJ now has that at the beginning. Maybach music. Yeah. Metro yeah, Boomer, yeah, exactly. uh -huh, yeah, that's 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 spot on. It's I'm like the thing I'm most fascinated about uh, that I've just been spending my time on a lot is just like in the crypto space. Mm. I feel like there's a new platform coming. I have no idea what it is, but I think it's it's the antithesis of TikTok and Instagram. I think like I think that there is some poison within those platforms, um, and I don't want to. I don't want. I don't think of it as like being anonymous, but I think of it as something other than everyone trying to show off who they are and like, let's all hate each other. Or like, that's all like, it's, it's something different. Mm -hmm. Just like my hot two cents. All right, here we go. Some yeah. questions. Yo, yeah. for, for uh, just a quick note for folks that I see in the comments asking for the PDF, head over to loopinsure.co slash EYL, loopinsure.co slash EYL. That entire breakdown for content strategy uh, is available for download for free. 
All right, let's get to it. Edith. Yeah, Jada uh, Kiss also has a legendary. Yeah. <laughs> Jada. <laughs> uh, also, Wiz got the laugh. Uh, there, I don't think got the, it's the rock. <laughs> I don't think there's there's not one mainstream rapper that doesn't have their uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, you know, you know, I got to tell this quick story before we get to the question. We, 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 we was with Rick Ross the other day. Mm-hmm. And uh, one well, of you might have seen the way when I seen that, I was like, <laughs> when the fuck did this happen? Like, shout out, shout out to Rose. <laughs> you you might have seen it. One of our friends was like, yo, if you get, you should get him to say, huh. So I, I'm not going <laughs> to ask some, I'm not going to ask him to say, huh. It's literally, it's, so I meet him, I dap him, we dap up, he hugs. And as we get close, he goes, huh. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you just needed to be recording that shit so you can my <laughs> episodes of that. <laughs> shout out to oh, Rose. Shout out Ricky Rose, man. Edith, Edith uh, where are you calling in from and what's your question? Hi, good evening, everyone. How you doing? Um, I just want to say that my heart is beating so fast. Like, you all really dropped some gems. Um, Thank you, thank you. I don't even know what question I will <laughs> because you all said so much, but now I'm really thinking about um the audio, the audio voice. Like I, I'm following um Coach Stormy and um you all I you know what I'm not gonna ask a question. I'm just gonna say that you all drop some gems. I have my notes. And I am so proud to be um, an earner of EYL University. Okay, thank you so much. That's love, Edith. Yeah, thank, you. Appreciate, appreciate thank you. Appreciate it. That's thank awesome. You. Thank, um, you. thank you. Uh, fellas, the biggest up on on notes. Start oh. pushing buttons. Like I, I, I'm as someone who went to school and everything, and like I love note taking. I'm so passionate about like if you like, I'm sure there's so much that you could learn from what. John and the crew were, were talking about earlier, but like literally upload a video and publish it, you'll get mm. so much learnings from that. <laughs> like mm. you really will. Vo- volume, vo- uh, the, the, this whole debate about like quantity over quality, I've ended up landing on quantity leads to quality. There's no way you're gonna get good unless you've been in the ring. And eventually once you get punched enough times, you can slow the movements down. Um, <clears throat> So the volume strategy, man, I subscribe 100%. Thank you, Edith. Appreciate you. Justin Robertson, what's good, bro? Where are you calling in from? And what's your question? John's good at yeah, this. Yeah, he's good at this. Yeah, that's <laughs> usually my job. John, John, <laughs> knows what John really knows what he's doing out here. Real smooth transitions. I like it. John, I'm a huge fan of you. Found thank out you, about you. you from EYL. So thank you to my EYL brothers. Um, thank you, bro. Thank you. Of course, of course. So, uh, and I'm sorry, um, the, the guest name one more time. The, hey, uh, the Andy. Andy, sorry, Andy. Um, I was very interested That's when you said something in, in regards to the crypto space. So, with the um, the YouTube Shorts coming from someone, so I'm trying to add value. I've, I've really picked up. Obviously, what you need to do first is add value. So, watching EYL, you guys provide so much value. John, I follow you. You provide so much value. Andy, obviously, I'll be following you now. You provide so much value. So, with this YouTube Shorts, with it being 60 seconds, just maybe coming up with something that encapsulates. 30 to 60 seconds of something you guys, more information you guys give out, that's something you could possibly put on YouTube shorts? Yeah. You know, and I, like value can come in many, many forms. Like I think what, what the value you're getting right now is like edu- education and strategy, right? But making someone laugh is value too. It's comedic value. It's entertainment value. There's many forms of value. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, that's really the only question I had in regards to uh, the YouTube Shorts thing. Um, other than that, did you have any crypto spaces that you see that would um, really be advanced with audio space? Like the, obviously listening, something being developed um, in a de- decentralized platform. Do you know any about any projects about that? I have no clue. I, I, I know. <laughs> I, I know. I know people are into this thing called Euro Beats which allows you to invest in like audio samples and beats and get royalties off of future purchasers or if the tracks ever using uh, Rick Ross's next album. I got you. Well, thank you very much. And then on the last thing for you, Don, would just be how many pieces of content do you think you need to be recording a day? Um, I know I was, I was following you said, you know, companies still think doing one piece of content a day is doing good and that's ridiculous. <laughs> What would be like a number? Like, obviously, I see how engaged you are. I actually got an email from you once and um, asking for me to put a song on Spotify's playlist. 
I emailed back and said Jasmine Sullivan and it got updated like within an hour. And I was like, what the hell? So I, I think that engagement is awesome. So as far as that, like, what do you think? Let's like, fucking a good go. Engagement, <laughs> baby. Yo. Yo, death over with, man. Listen, I'll say this. Um, I want to take, with Loop, I want to take an extreme position on content, uh, being a content first company. Uh, the we spent rather than over index on just like a ridiculous ad budget. What we're doing is over indexing on bringing people into the team whose sole job is to produce, design, edit, community manage. I mean, I really think that we're entering into this era of community as a moat. You can't fuck with the EYL brand because like, like you can't replicate their shit. You can't just take assets over liabilities and slap it on a similar color shirt right? Like it's the, it's the community is the moat. And I think that content is the best way to nurture a community. So for us, man, we're starting to, at this point, shoot one, two hours a day. We're starting to document almost everything we do just about clip it up. And I would like to get to a point where we're posting four or five times a day across all platforms, to be honest. Um, and the big ones for us is Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, uh, am I missing some here? Facebook, we just do the auto repost. I, I'm, I think I'm leaving some bread on the table with Facebook uh, and, and TikTok where we're leaning into. So I think if you think about it, there are billions of people collectively aggregating on five websites, if you fucking think about it, right? So like, if you're not posting there, man, you're leaving bread on the table. And for people, like I've just been hammering this message ever since it's been drilled into me, but the way to grow any brand or business in this day um, is to just over index on the production of content and you'll see your brand organically begin to grow. People will talk about it um, and then share. And, and then the one thing that wasn't discussed, but that is responding to DMs, like community management and depth and responding to emails. That's what keeps people around. Um, but yo, Justin, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate the support. Um, I'm looking forward to you being a Loop customer. Um, we're going to do all kinds of really cool shit down the stretch, man. We want to build the first billion dollar insurance business that was grown primarily through social media and we will do it. And people will then refer back to this video. It's like, oh shit, they shared the fucking blueprint. <laughs> uh, Justin, thanks, so much. thanks a lot, man. John, real, real quick on, on hosting this EYL thing. Anybody that asks more than one question, we gotta say guidelines. Yeah. They're, they're, all, they're all taping guidelines. He, he Shout out to Justin. <laughs> he went for it. He knew that he's like, oh, John's doing it? Oh, I got it. <laughs> Shout right, out to Justin. Good. Justin, appreciate you. Let's get another question in here. By the way, loopinsure.co slash EYL, loopinsure.co slash EYL for the download. Head over, download it. We'll see you there. Matt, where are you calling in from and what's your question? Oh, yeah. Matt, don't do this. Fridge break. Oh, there's no yeah, fridge John, breaks. John, John really is good at it. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, he's like a, he's like a radio <laughs> he host, took over this thing. Yeah, <laughs> got talented, man. Well, we got, we got this whole to... insurance entrepreneurship thing doesn't work out for you, John. <laughs> but he definitely could be a radio personality, man. I got a job at EYL lined up for me. All right. All right, Matt. Look, frizz breaks. Matt. You know how this goes. Sorry, no frizz bro. breaks. We'll catch you on another one. Cheers. Jeffrey, we coming to you. Unmute yourself. You've been unmuted. What's going on? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. What's, What's up, it? Jeff? How's it going? Uh, it's going really well. Um, thank you for all the gems. And I'm really looking forward to everything else that you guys are dropping. Appreciate it. Appreciate uh, but my question is how do you strategize when you're starting a new business and you create content for something that's extremely niche? Like if my girlfriend wants to do stuff for new mothers, stuff that's like geared toward, towards uh, Montessori. Mm. So how would you strategize? You said new, new, new mothers towards what? Uh, like Montessori style toys and just things that are educational. Those are, or, the, those, those are the schools where they let the kids do whatever they want, right? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> My kind of education. I think there, there's there's so many opportunities, right? Like I think every every uh, kid or mother has their own interests outside of just like thinking about a monastery school. They still live their lives, so it could be a lot more generic than you mm. think. But also. Uh, do consumer research like spend time on twitter search type in monastery school type in school type in new mother and just read comments i would mm. be surprised if you don't get four or five or ten different ideas too mm. community that's i like that ak because that's like social listening one yeah. thing to, to jump in there um this is something that i i've done 
that I found to be successful, but you can personally like new moms, that's a niche. There's a lot of social, there's a lot of physical and social networking that goes on between new moms because it's such a unique and distinct life experience. So me being you, I would literally create a podcast, a video podcast that I would host on IGTV vertical. And I would uh, interview different new moms um, and profile different new moms that are coming up that are notable, doing interesting things, being a boss babe, whatever that type into that whole ethos. And if, eventually what you do is you create a community of people that are effectively coming around to meet other new moms mm-hmm. and they'll discover your business as a result of the content that you put forth. One of, I'm sure many ideas, um, but that's one, one of Facebook, them. Facebook groups seem like a gold mine too. join mm-hmm. every new mom, Facebook group, every Montessori school, Facebook group, and just ask meaningful questions. What are you guys interested in? What are your guys' biggest problems? What, how could I ever bring value in terms of education or information to you guys? I'm sure you'll get a lot of info. Mm-hmm. Yo, by the way, that's a, that's a hidden one. Uh, AK that's not often discussed, but Facebook groups is a sleeper, man. There's no sleeper, a lot. It's like, <laughs> it, it, that's where you have depth too you know like if you're in a facebook group and you're active i feel like you're in it you know and you can get real action whether i know there's like top in sports card facebook groups where there's like a lot of transactions happening there's facebook groups for bowling like all kinds of stuff definitely monastery schools and new mothers that's mm. that's like eyo facebook group it's lit it's a party in every day it's yeah. crazy yeah. But you know, it never, okay. never discount the value of niche audiences. That's something that Ryan Leslie told us. Shout out to him. And um, you know, if you know his story, he made like a million dollars and he only sold like a couple thousand records. But he is really a great episode on EYL. And um, a lot of times, people think that you have to have you know a, a broad range message, but that's mm-hmm. kind of like dilutes the situation. And you know, if you're appealing to every single person, you're not really appealing to anybody. Mm-hmm. But you dial it down and you and you appeal to a niche audience, whether that's you know ethnic, whether that's religious, whether that's whatever, mm-hmm. um, there's value in that because people are tribal by nature and people mm-hmm. like to, you know, congregate with people that are similar to themselves. So you'd be surprised how many, you know, new moms out there that are experiencing the same thing with their children, mm-hmm. you know, especially, you know, now with homeschool and all that stuff that don't have an outlet, don't have a community. Um, and they would love to be part of a community. So yeah. the mm-hmm. content strategy of, yeah, like even like how we started, which is, you know, going on other people's shows and giving content and putting it out there. And you'd be surprised how many people would be interested in that because it's something that I'm assuming there's not a lot of people that's actually focused on that. Maybe there is a lot, I'm not yeah. sure. But. And they, that audience is laser focused. They're coming for that exact thing. Yep. So you get new moms, they're like, wait, I'm a new mom. I didn't even know I belonged. I needed to belong to something, but I just found something that I'm a part of. There's somebody that's sharing similar experiences and share and similar stories. Now I have a voice, right? Especially for new moms. Like there's there's something that that connects motherhood, right? That that men that we don't know, but women go through. And to have another voice is definitely going to be something that you can maximize on and build a community off of. Yeah, man. Riches and niches. And the way I view is any any startup, you're going to be strapped on resources. And if you try, if you try to go toe to toe with the general market, you're going to lose 10 times out of 10. You just don't have the, the capacity and the resources to cover that wider range. But if you can find, I, I tweeted about this yesterday, but if you can find your minimum viable audience, that's mm, not talk, there's a lot of talk about minimum viable product, but if you can find minimum viable audience where they overlap, that's smaller, easier to cover territory. Every new mom who's in a Montessori school, there's probably there's probably so few of them that every one of them should know you by name. I want every single one of them to know you by fucking name, literally. And if if you're not coming up top five when they think of whatever it is that you're doing, in my opinion, you're either not niche enough or you're not putting enough enough you're not putting out enough content in your niche. Um, so Jeff, I hope this brought you value, my friend. Um, I don't want to abuse oh. Andy's time. Uh, Andy, you good to rock to 715? Four more minutes and we'll take two more. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. All right. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, Jeff, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Whole lot of game. Let's bring somebody up real quick. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Tim Harris, we coming to you. Tim, unmute yourself. You've been unmuted. What's going on? Yeah, what's going on, guys? Uh, just a general question. As someone that uh, in my sector, I deal with a lot of uh, grief and especially focusing on that in general. I just saw, you know, that seven minute podcast at 731. So 
shout out to that. So with, with going in there and going in grief, how big of an audit or how, how big do you think that that can get in just having a short form podcast that can really generate the, uh, the most impact with people that are going through stuff like that? Can I, can I just add my two cents to this real quick? I mean, I think that that's probably the biggest thing that you can possibly do in, in the world is have a short form podcast for grief. Cause it's like, everybody goes through grief at some, some point, point in time and they don't want to hear hour long sermons, but if they can hear a five minute message that can get them through their day mm. to me, I mean, that's probably one of the most beneficial things that you can ever create. Mm. Mm. That's facts. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> in my brain. No, no, I, I appreciate that for sure. Yeah, yeah so- I think it's just like, do you, do you have the appetite to continually do it? You, you know, to show up every day and do that podcast. Like it's only two minutes, but you really got to love it and enjoy it and want to be able to deliver it in a meaningful way. But I, I totally agree, man, in terms of just like the sentiment around grief and also just like capturing attention in a daily cadence for a short form podcast. Mm-hmm. And I will say I try to do some daily shit. Yo, daily is hard as mm. fuck, bro. <laughs> I, I struggled to do daily in my own home in front of a mic. Yeah. It blows now my I imagine mind. you're trying to live your life too. Bro, right? that's what I was going to say. You guys did daily V. Like, I, I really don't think people understand. It was a literal daily vlog. And I chopped it up with D-Rock. And I was like, yo, who do you have editing this shit? And I, I, I know now you guys got mad support. But for a minute, it was just D-Rock just shooting and fucking editing in the same day, bro. And yeah. and after a while, I had my, my vlogger following me. Like after like three days in the week, I was like, yo, I need a fucking break. Go home. Right? Like, <laughs> like it was three, so, we, we, didn't, we didn't know what the fuck we were doing, man. We were, I was so hard on all of us because I'm like, we gotta be the best. But I didn't realize like we I was comparing something to like that wasn't being done. I gave D Rock such a hard time. I'm like, bro, you gotta be faster than the he's like, what the fuck? I'm like, <laughs> Shout out to your man. Like that. That's okay. Tim, Tim that, that's something that, that's very true, man. It, you could make it a five minute podcast, but the five minute podcast could take you two to three hours to actually get out. And so just, just know that if you're going to do that every day, you got to be consistent with it. Because one thing that people love is consistency. If they're going to make you a part of their day, after a month, we want to see you on month two. Right, right. Facts, facts. Yo, uh, Edith, thanks for the question. Or oh, I guess that was uh, Jeff or whoever that was. Thank you. So uh, last one, question. One, let's one bring last him question. In. Yeah, let's go to one. John, so on you. I'm going to let. Oh, this is my. Did he go? He left. Oh, boss. There he is. Boss, we coming to you. Unmute yourself. You've been unmuted. What's going on? Hey, fellas. How you doing? My God. What's going on with you? I'm good. I'm good. First off, uh, happy anniversary on the podcast. Yeah. Appreciate all that. Um, so I have a social work uh, podcast and um, you know, I'm trying to put out content like, what, what are the different um, items you mentioned earlier about, uh, you know, I love the uh, captions on, on the videos. What, what, what sort of stuff do you guys use? So, you know, I'm into you know, trying, to, trying to get more content out. I guess, are you asking like best, best ways to grow a podcast pretty much? Yeah, uh, or uh, just diff- different ways of, of shooting videos with, with captions. Like, like I'm not really that, that tech savvy. How do you how do you put captures on videos? That's your that's your question. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I think you can like on some real life easy free shit. Ninety nine percent sure you can upload to YouTube. YouTube will give you automatedly generated captions. Those captions are basically on point now. Like five years ago, they weren't anywhere close, but they're basically accurate. There are going to be some typos and some random shit but you'll get free captions. You can download the SRT file. Once you have the SRT file, you can use a different software like Caplink, upload those caption files and you'll be good. Or you just spend your time fucking typing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good point. Cause you could do it um, close. You can do a caption, closed caption mm-hmm. on YouTube and then it's actually just gonna. So when you take it from YouTube, I'm assuming the closed caption is gonna show up. Uh, yep. Yeah, the transcript, yeah. Right? Yeah. All right, well shit. All right, thank there you, you. It, folks, there you have it. Uh, let me remove you guys from the audience real quick. I appreciate you guys participating. Um, yo, one time for my guy, AK, man. Wow. Man, you guys are cool as fuck. Man. That was, <laughs> yo, I, got, I feel special, man. I, yo, that, I actually learned, though. I actually, um, some stuff I'm going to implement tonight. Uh, the YouTube mm-hmm. situation, definitely, I'm going to implement that. ASAP. 
do, and, the, do the YouTube ASAP. Yeah, and captions, um, something that we've been asked about. We haven't done that, but um, that's actually a good point, what you just said about the YouTube thing. At the very least, we can at least do that. Um, so yeah, I actually learned a few different things that I'm gonna implement. Yo, AK, wow. some, some parting parting thoughts with, with love. Um, just like your take on like, if you were to watch this clip that's about to occur now, uh, a year from today, like what are your like predictions for like social and the way shit's headed? Uh, and what are some of your parting tips for people like that they should ask you? Predictions? I have no fucking idea, man. I, I, <laughs> I think every day uh, I'm so fascinated by what the world looks like in April 14, 2022. Right. Like the, the amount of change we've gone through over the last year, I think is unprecedented. And I think it's going to lead to a lot of new things, beneficial, but I think it's going to be a different world. And I'm excited for it. I have no fucking idea. Just be, be ready for change. Be open to change. Uh, assume that change and being adaptable is your greatest strength. Mm. Um, other than that, like put yourself, be comfortable with sharing your story, you know, like whether that's like overcoming your insecurities by just talking about them, like the whole eight mile shit or whatever it is. Like I love Twitter as a playground to play with your ideas, to then uh, dive deeper into, into other platforms. Like if you ever have anything that you think is cool, they're interesting or like, Oh, that's fun. Fucking tweet it. Twitter's a fire hose. Like use Twitter as your platform for all other platforms around what ideas you may have. Mm -hmm. um, tell your story, have fun. Don't overthink shit. Live your life, man. Yeah. Hang out with John and fucking listen to these dudes because uh, <laughs> they know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> My God. Yo, there you have it, folks. Everyone catch uh, Andy Crane. I know some of you guys are on the YouTube I've, I've been seeing, I've been asking for his Instagram. I want to put it up here. It's at Cranac. At Cranac. Follow Andy Cranac, man. He's a silent but when he speaks you gotta listen man. <laughs> on the forefront of all this shit um i'm glad i'm glad to call you a friend man thank you for jumping on the show thank you both thank you bro thank you appreciate y'all much love thank, thank you. you thank you, thank you. Bye -bye. yeah man <laughs> at some point at some point you have that was to a be, master class you have to be grateful at some point ladies and gentlemen um easily, <laughs> easily, <Damn. laughs> easily could have charged a thousand dollars or more for that. That was a, I, like I said, I personally, I'm, I'm going to implement some things that he just said that I know is going to make us money. I, I, I wasn't really even aware of that YouTube short was actually being put out there so much by YouTube, but it makes, it makes sense yeah. because everybody's trying to compete with TikTok. Um, so it makes complete sense. And I only watch YouTube on my phone. So it makes, it makes sense. Um, hundred percent. hundred. I learned a lot too, man. That's my boy. And, and, Yo, for, for those of you guys that never been to VaynerMedia, like at first they were if the flat iron district in New York, just like, just mad, like a sweatshop type of vibe. Like, and Gary's like, I fucking invest in people, not space, you know? And then, <laughs> and then he got an investment from Stephen Ross, um, who's the chairman of related companies and also uh, owner of the Miami Dolphins. And Stephen Ross actually built Hudson Yards. <clears throat> and then you know, they worked out some arrangement and they have this fucking sick space now and out in Hudson Yards. And that was like the hub for creators. Like anyone who was in the scene, people would fly in from all over just and get a meeting with anybody who worked at VaynerMedia and then just like walk around and try to see if GV was around and just hang out with these dudes. And Andy Cranach, any chance I could, man, I would, I would chop with him in the hallways of VaynerMedia and just be like, yo, what's the latest? And just stay on the pulse because when you're at the forefront like they are, and I think it's, it's okay to recognize that they are. Although I'm competitive, so I'm coming up next. And then uh, GV was like, yo, you're up next, bro, relax. Um, but um, yo, this is just a wealth of information, man. So I hope you guys soaked it in. Um, all of this information, I'm gonna share this one time, one last time. Um, there are slides that we didn't even get into that breaks down like how you should view micro content and converting folks into followers, remember. You never fell in love with any artist off a single. You got to have singles and then you use the long form to uh, to turn them into into depth, into followers and fans. Um, so all that information is up on the link, loopinsure.co slash EYL. This is the Wealth Principles every Thursday, only for the month of April, 6 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to chop it up one hour, one hour long episodes. Um, as you can see, we're bringing the heat. Um, and maybe we'll be back by popular demand at the, after the month is up. It's up to you guys, though. I'm not coming back unless you ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> ask for it. Um, but see, fellas, you got you got a, you got a knack at this at this thing, man. Maybe you know we got us we got a spot for you. At yeah, there's, there's a network that I know of. That's a fact, man. <laughs>
Got you, got you. Um, all right, fellas. Yo, fire, man. I look forward to seeing what clips come from. Yo, I, I literally, I, I, I listen like an editor. There was just clip after clip after clip after clip on this one. So I'm excited for this shit to make his, uh, make his rounds. Let's do it. Let's yeah, yeah. And, it. and uh, the link for the, the site is on YouTube and it's also in the chat here in Zoom. So make sure y'all head over and get your PDF. And anybody that's, cause a lot of people ask if you watch Market Mondays or you watch um, anything that we do on YouTube, the people that have Zoom access are members of EYL University. So mm, that's lot, what it is. Okay, okay. You know, people, people ask like, how do I get Zoom access? That's, that's reserved for the elite All students. All earners, all earners. All earners, that's a fact. Top earners, baby. All right, yeah. bet. All right, y'all, signing off. Enjoy your Thursdays. I'll see you guys next week. All right, Peace. Appreciate you. No doubt.